and time it says it's 301, so I guess we need to get started. <clears throat> Mr. Hewitt, do you want to address this first? Or? Sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I've, I've got some slides together. I don't know how the board uh, wishes to proceed, but I have some slides uh, I'd like to maybe serve as a preamble. Um, a yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go through those. Okay. As a recap on our, I'll throw it. As a recap on our schedule, uh, begin back in April, we started with our initial uh, gold session. Uh, we followed that with the canal dredging working group. The department heads have submitted their inputs to me. We got together and looked at revenues on the 17th of May. The budget message was delivered to the board on uh, at the end of May, and that brings us to, to today's workshop. <laughs> Helps if I turn it on. Uh, today's workshop. Uh, hopefully the objectives to be accomplished is to review the proposed budget, the board refine the spending plan as necessary, and to set our public hearing for the budget. In going through uh, what types of information to speak to the board and the, the audience today, um, of course, I thought about hitting on highlights by fund, by budget, and uh, what I thought may be better to do as far as addressing uh, specific high-level things was to talk in terms about what the budget does and what it does not do, uh, in addition to the introduction and some of the things in the capital improvement plan. And what the, what the proposed budget does of course, as required by the Local Government Physical <coughs> Control Act, the first thing that you have to do is you have to appropriate your current debt service, that being the new town hall, the emergency operations center, our obligations for sewer, and also we have installment financing purchase, an installment financing purchase agreement uh, out with for the police department vehicles. In that same light, um, we also have appropriations made for capital debt associated with our sewer service contractual agreement with Brunswick County, which is, even though it's a contractual arrangement, in essence it is a capital type debt. Um, this budget also uh, introduces a capital improvement plan. That is uh, something that we haven't seen before and uh, proposes a 10-year uh, scope on things that may be uh, brought forward. The, probably the most obvious um, introduction there, even though there are some, some other things in the near term, are the uh, streets capital outlay 10-year uh, program. That was a, a product of our street survey. Um, this budget also decreases our fund balance available down to 19%, and that's a foot stomp for y'all um, because that fund balance available is a litmus test that the Local Government Commission uses to uh, gauge the um, success or failure of the local government's uh, management of their finances. Um, that's a very broad statement, but one of the things, in addition to, and I'll talk about this uh, when I get into the Central Reach uh, project introduction, but um, there are some potential consequences and concerns raised that will uh, certainly be discussed by taking that fund balance down to 19%. Uh, this slide here gives a relative 
measure of what some of the other beach communities have up and down the coast here and you know going all the way from Duck to um, to Sunset Beach I think that's from Virginia to South Carolina these were uh, a smattering of some that I pulled off of, pulled from the local government treasurer's um, information and this is as of 2015. I don't know what folks are doing this year. This is uh, uh, June 30, 2015, AFRA information. As you can see, Holden Beach in 2015, uh, we're down there second to last with a 24 cent fund balance. And that is important because whenever we have a fund balance and if we move forward with the Central Reach project making a substantial cash contribution, we will not be able to tell the local government commission, ah, that's okay, we got this big old pile of money over here in the beach fund. And we have been successful with communicating that in the past. I do not know um, how that will be um, received by the local government commission uh, this year, if uh, moving forward. The budget also does, uh, it also establishes a central reach project by capital project fund. It escrows the projected one and a half million dollar debt service payment per the interlocal agreement with Brunswick County. It makes a projected interest only payment uh, for the debt service appropriation. Uh, in April, I believe, is what we're projecting of $192,000. It keeps about $2 million <coughs> in the B Park Fund fund balance. It incorporates those revenue uh, increases that we proposed for water and sewer and also inspections <coughs> in the budget that we proposed last uh, or, uh, mid May. The tax rate increase is seven cents. That is, uh, we had talked to, uh, whenever the financial consultants came in, we were looking at nine and a half cents. Uh, that was their projection, and I will talk to that a, a little bit more uh, when I get into some of my concerns. The budget uh, provides, uh, I think it's $130,000 for the paving of streets in accordance with our street survey, uh, Tide Ridge and Jordan Boulevard. I'm going to go ahead and say that the, um, the monies that are budgeted for the streets resurfacing do not include any stormwater um, uh, issue that, from issues that may arise. It's only the engineer's estimate that I've included in there plus another 15% for surveying and engineering, but those <coughs> those uh, estimates for street surveys do not provide for any type of stormwater uh, fixes that may come to play. Thank you, bless you. Appreciate it. That may come into play um, as we as we go through that. Budget does retain um, the current employee benefits. It rolls over the previously approved contractual uh, parks and rec trust fund project. And I, I think I should have hit return here because uh, the end of part of project, that should increase the solid waste budget, should uh, should be a new line. That's, that's not together there. So. Um, just put a dot there beside it. It increases the solid waste budget. We've seen an increase in the provision of that uh, service in this year's budget. And there is also um, an unknown uh, regarding what the future level service changes will bring whenever we look at amending that contract in January. So I've got two things going on. I've got more trash and I have a contract um, amendment going in there. So we may be doing two things um, at the same time. Anyway, that budget does go up some. 
the generator sets, uh, and we can look at the uh, capital improvement plan, what I've done there, even though that uh, sewer vulnerability study has not been um, vetted with the board yet. I've appropriated $210,000 for um, the generators, gen sets for two generators and four electrical hookups, if you will, uh, from the pending sewer advisory committee's study. Uh, it, it accommodates the canal dredging program and also not listed here is the fact that it finishes <coughs> the terminal growing project permitting and <coughs> provides a refurbishment for the water tower. It's been 30 years since that water tower was stripped down. It rolls over the residual funding for the water meter upgrades and also uh, procures a new uh, small excavator, a Kubota, and a shoring system in the water fund. Those items aren't, uh, those last few items I had neglected to include those in, in your, uh, your copies or on the slides here. A Kubota, huh? A shoring system. That's um, kind of like a dumpster that you put in the ground whenever you dig a hole to keep it inside and collapse. What the budget, the budget does not do, there are no colas or merit raises in the budget. Um, we're pretty much all in on the Central Reach project. There are no Lockwood Folly Inlet maintenance navigation funds. I, and what I mean by that, traditionally, there have been funds appropriated to do, like the Merit was here uh, recently. There aren't any funds included in there for that. There are no funds for the shallow gap <coughs> inlet maintenance using the least cost method of disposal um, capability that the Merck provides. There are no beach nourishment funds uh, that would allow the town to piggyback on the core's uh, semi or every two years biennial, biennial <coughs> uh, clearing of the uh, Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway crossing. And by that, the difference between inland navigation and waterway maintenance uh, over at Brown's Landing, that's the waterway crossing area. And traditionally, as you use the pipeline dredge to put that sand on the beach. David, can I ask a question? Sure. Does that suggest that we don't plan to dredge the inlet for the next year? Um, it, I think that we're at a point where we have to make a decision on, um, on which projects that you're going to do. There's, uh, there's a number of ways, uh, there's a number of projects in front of you, and you can uh, opt to do those in a number of ways. One of the um, proposed and what is reflected in the budget is a cash contribution of $3 million for the Central Reach project. Yeah. If we're going to provide $3 million in the Central Reach project, with the proposed level of taxation, there's not going to be any money to do those kinds of things. And it's actually four and, a, four and a half million, given that you've got to give some to the county for to put in reserves out of the B part fund. Um, the math that I did was six and a half million at the end of this year. You've got to give the county a million and a half. Right, and we're taking three, right? That's five. That's, that's the simple math. Now, um, if the board wishes to, to put either some of that $2 million into play here, you can. I'm just saying that the proposed budget um, as presented 
does not does not um, purport to provide that capability. Now, you're going to have to you, you you will have an opportunity to make a decision on. Um, we just got a, a input from the core or a request from the core. Christy, you want to talk sure. about that? Last Tuesday, when I went to the memorandum of agreement meeting in New Bern, when David was doing the interlocal agreement at the um, board meeting with the commissioners for the county, um, it looks like the core is going to get three million dollars to do um, the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway crossings in North Carolina, and they reached out to communities who had piggyback before to see if anybody is interested in piggybacking. Um, with the memorandum of agreement, the way it works now, we went over this a little bit in orientation, but I know that's been a while. It used to be a 50-50 split where if it was, but now the state will pay two-thirds. So we do have the option there that if we did decide that we wanted to piggyback on, on that, that they are looking to be in our area doing that. The contract is going out in July. And they're looking to start with upland areas in September and then permitting environmental in those beach areas in November. Now, is that to take sand from them or is that to have them dredge the shallow water inlet? Dredge the inlet with beneficial use placement on the. And what about taking any of the sand they get out of the neck? That's exactly where it would come from is that it's going to be a small pipeline dredge at the crossing, and the crossing is right there at Brown's Landing. Right. And they would also go for the bend wide, which is kind of back up toward the Davis Creek side. Um, right now, I believe that they're looking at 200,000 yards for all five inlets without knowing what, um, you know, what types of volumes are in the crossing. It's, it's about filled in. I can, you know, we've looked at the survey. Um, historically, we've gotten um, up to 180,000 yards out of there, and it's been several years since that area has been harvested. It's quite obvious that the um, the Oak Island project that put sand on the beach out of Davis Creek, it's not a navigation project because that's filled in, and so it is the crossing um, on, the, on the back side. There's plenty of sand there. Um, <coughs> In a perfect world, uh, the way this is setting up, um, we could dovetail that project uh, with our Central Reach project. We're starting at 240, you know, the Central Reach project, kick in $300,000 for, let's just say there's 100,000 yards out there. Uh, the state's going to pay for two thirds of it. and. Um, you know, pay for pay about three dollars less than four dollars a yard for sand um, from about Amazing Grace down to sometimes it's gone all the way down to uh, uh, the Winding River Clubhouse, which is actually beyond the start point of our Central Reach project. So there's that, an opportunity. That's in contrast to ten dollars a yard expected, right? right. is being funded at a level that basically pays for mobilization of, of the asset and they are looking for opportunities for the local governments and the state to parlay on the unit cost. So, you know, that's, that's there's, there's an opportunity here, but when that opportunity is a cost and if, if, you know, if you want to do something like that, you know, we can so what do you think our, our uh, cost would be then? I, I always like 10 because it's a round number. Um, that is a function of the actual dredge environment, the mm -hmm. bidding environment, and the, the contract goes to bid in July, did you say? I'm pull it up really quick while you keep talking about And our, our, our contribution, our, our one-third contribution, what? If, if we wanted 100,000 yards um, and, and it was a million bucks for 100,000 yards, our contribution was at 330, yeah, okay. 350, something like that. Um, if, if the cost came in at 10, you know, um, the, the 
precedent that we experienced before <clears throat> was that since the Corps is putting the machine in place, you know, all we're paying for is the unit cost. We're not putting, you know, we're not paying the mobilization. Um, one of the questions that we've asked, though, uh, is the fact that is this going to be done under the Corps' authorization through the MOA? When we did the piggyback project before, the Corps turned the dredger loose and we contracted directly with the dredger and the yardages that were placed on the beach were actually done under the town's permit. So there's a there's a there's a nuance there that we need to get an answer for because our existing permit, the residual permit that we have for that area, um, would have to be modified. That's not that big a deal, but still it is a, a, a an expense that has to be incurred and, and that can be managed, but it, it, it's an important question. It is so much easier to do it under the Corps' authorization and, you know, we're just paying a bill instead of actually engaging in the, um, the contracting, the contract process. That, that could probably have been a yes or no answer, but, you know, if, that, that's what it's a... You, you asked about the bid opening UI award in August, notice to proceed September, and beach community dredging November start, and it would depend on where they start from. So we, we, we would need to talk to Roger Bullock on what type of, uh, of unit costs they got back on that to be able to have a have a, a cost certain on it. And if we wanted to do it, we could always make an appropriation to do <coughs> it when we make the decision. You could. You could. Um, but I'm assuming they will want, to, the core will need to know in terms of uh, calendaring dredge windows especially since there's five shallow draft units and they want to start in November and then it would be April, that kind of thing. But getting 100,000 for 300,000, 100,000 yards for, for 300,000 versus, let's say, 700,000 or 650 for the uh, central reach, yeah. right? Just reduces the cost of the central reach by that much, by the savings. No. Instead of paying $10 a yard, you're paying three? The Central Reach Project's uh, eastern terminus is at 240 Ocean Boulevard East. Right. The Corps' authorization, uh, they would start with uh, about amazing grace, and I mean it wouldn't it, it would be a one for wouldn't one. be a part of that. It okay. wouldn't be one for one. It, we would be we would be fortunate if it met it if it met. Um, you know, where the Central Reach project starts if that one ended. It, it'd be really nice if there were $200,000 out there and got a good price on it. Because that was the, um, about Winding River, I believe, is where that project, when it had 180000 yards that it ended. So. But it wouldn't, I, I, I would not forecast that it would offset the Central Reach project. It would, it would dovetail and make a larger total project but um, the, uh, the projects themselves would not be coincidental. And, that, and your last bullet is troubling as well, right? Um, so the only thing we're gonna do for the sewer, the only budgeted item for the sewer fixes are the two. This was a, oh no, I missed that bullet. So, and I, I don't wanna talk to that. Okay. Um, in, in the um, in the capital improvement plan, um, the uh, the uh, estimates for the lift station fixes they were about six hundred thousand uh, dollars for the big lift station, about five hundred thousand for the other three lift stations, and um, I pulled fifty five uh, fifty two thousand dollars. <coughs> Um, from each of those estimates to get the $210,000 for the two gen sets and the four electrical connections and move that into the, to the, um, the current budget year. What, and then I left the other fixes in year two of the 
the capital capital budget, knowing that um, even if the board were appropriate the money to go to work <coughs> on on getting the engineering, we couldn't get couldn't get the project done before this time next year. So I neglected to go ahead and pull the engineering estimate that I left in this capital improvement line <coughs> into the current year. And that's that's a that is a line or, or a line in the estimate, but I just I neglected to do that. So I wanted to point that out. And it should be done if you want to move forward with it because you'll have to have um, hardcore engineering designs and specs um, done this budget year in order to do the work in the next budget year. So that's I wanted to point that out that I haven't pulled that money forward and we have to we have to do that if if the board desires to move forward with the project. But you can you can make that as a supplemental appropriation. I, I, and and um, I say that it was a oh no, but I just wanted to make sure that the supervisory committee has not come to you yet, and <coughs> you guys have not seen their proposal. Um, and you know I didn't want to step on on their toes either. The gin sets, I think those are that we got to do those anyway. That's a, that's really a, a, a got to get done kind of thing. These other engineering specs, you can make that as a supplemental appropriation uh, based on your review uh, once they once they come to you, and they'll they'll be coming to you in June, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So I I, I was just curious what you, I'm glad you explained that the engineering because, yeah. and we'll talk about it when yeah. they present, but. I think there's some work before the engineering, but <laughs> before we implement their recommendation, there's a lot of, I think, step back okay. and take a look. But anyway, okay, thanks. David, you mentioned four electrical connection mods. Yeah, well, we've Don't got, we have we got two gen sets now. Right, so. Got to connect them. I was assuming we had electrical connections for the gen sets. He's talking about automatic transfer switches and necessary wiring that will automatically transfer right over. Okay. You've got there now just to make sure if somebody's going to okay. get a few hands. You still got to go from plug in. And the, and the whole idea is to have all four of them left at the pumping stations? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's right. Until the wind starts blowing real hard. And then we Unless we want it. Does that require a special permit to do that? Not that. Well, we've got to get an electrical permit to get work done, but... Um, I mean, to leave it there. Uh, no. Nothing no. Uh, from the state. Uh, well, if, say, Evans is the state man, I mean, he's, he's going to have to permit locally. I mean, we don't have to get a... Uh, I think your question was, was, I had raised it at some point in time, does the Division of Water Quality, is that going to be a permit? It's got to be locally permitted, though, to make sure that, that um, you know, we're not crossing a positive blue negative. Kind of thing. Uh, some of my concerns with the, with the budget, um, I, uh, I <coughs> professed, I feel that um, I've been overly optimistic with some of the revenue projections and uh, the expenses have been conservatively estimated. Um, I, um, well, Dave, I've which, got concerns about that. Which revenues are you saying are? Inspections and the ones that are specifically rated, related to construction and which have a direct effect on the sales and use tax that we get because those are a function of how many nails and lumber that you say. Well, so in the proposed budget, what's the... And, what, and, and... What's the increase? I, I don't know what, when you put the new water uh, rates on, 
just because you add a water charge on, that may make people actually use less water, which mean it's not you're not you may not sell as much water as you did the previous year. So those are those are those are two of my concerns. You know. Revenue projections always worry me. Um, you know, I guess the water usage is renters, not permanent residents. Well, and I'm watching I'm watching the renters. I went this last weekend and told I, the lady, "Do you have a leak?" Up, I had a fellow come up through the window not too too long ago the other day and go, "What does this mean?" <laughs> you know, like, Means they're filling the pool on the deck every morning. It's not a river. <laughs> no, it means I turned back my irrigation uh -oh. pretty substantially. Oh, okay. That's he's talking about me. <laughs> um, that said, you know, I, I have some some concerns or worries about our our ability to <clears throat> continue at the operational pace that we have. Um, with our with the proposed funding levels, um, you know, sooner I, I really got a feeling that sooner rather than later, there's only so many turns on the propeller with that rubber band that you can make before before it snaps. Um, I, I've just got a, a lingering a general concern with that. Probably the most important is that um, a concern that our available fund balance will not provide an adequate cushion acceptable by the local government commission and the market that we're trying to sell our special obligation bond in. You know, we're going down to a, a proposed 19% fund balance, uh, available fund balance level, and it's not that the available fund balance is a local determination that the board makes. You are the ones that decide, you know, what you're, what you're comfortable with. When we're in the market to, um, to issue paper, it's kind of when you go to keep it with my analogy on the, with the county on the interlocal agreement on co-signing on the teenager's note. Um, when you go to a car lot, you can pretty much get any car that you want, but um, how much are you going to have to pay on your financing is, is, is where it gets to. That's not exactly correct because um, the local government commission will not allow the town to strike a bad deal, and if the fund balance <coughs> available, in their opinion, is not where it needs to be, we won't have an agreement with um, that's our, our agreement for our ability, our application for financing will not be approved. That said, now isn't what, what's the required state fund balance? Eight percent. Okay, and that's not available fund balance. That's fund balance. You got to be able. You got to have. You got to have an available. You got to have an available fund balance of eight percent. Okay. Now this number subtracts out that eight percent. Correct. That's available fund balance. It takes everything that's. So this available is on top of that eight percent that the state requires. Mm -hmm. Right. So your gross fund balance uh, ratio is about forty percent. Is what I'm projecting. Okay. So and, and the the chart that I showed you before was available fund balance. <coughs> those weren't gross fund balances. Those were available fund balance. And um, what in in the budget message. Um, I, I actually <clears throat> attempt to define that as working capital. That, that, that is money that the town has to deal with emergencies, new projects, that you're walking around with. My mother used to call it pin money. But David, is it a fair question? How did we get there? How is it we're at the bottom of the list in that regard in terms of financial management? May I inject something from that? <clears throat> And ask a question to make sure that that all the towns are apples to apples because there are ways of shifting money from a budget this and a budget that and if, if you're not all placing your funds in the same type of accounts it will not show up that's, equal that's, Does a, that make that's, sense? That's, that's a great point and all towns don't have the same type of revenue streams for example 
Ushnaw Beach, Oak Island, Sunset Beach, all have liquor stores. And that is a revenue stream that town does not have. And that's just an example. They, they um, you know, everybody's different, and it is apples to apples to oranges sometimes. And that's why the Love of Government Commission, they, you know, that that is a litmus test, um, and their first tier. But I don't think I answered your question. Got to figure out how to get some more money. You know, the, the only way to change this would have been to raise taxes in the past. Instead of the taking B part was money. Made in the past, the economy sucked. We didn't we didn't raise taxes and we didn't give employees raises for years and years and years because we didn't want to raise taxes. You're going to you're going to catch twenty two. So you took it out of the B part fund, and the B part fund now would like to have more money in it. I don't understand that. Took what out of the Well, we spent money on the B part fund for expenses for the town year after year after no. year. As no. I recall, reading the notes from the meetings here, that was the reason we're not raising the taxes is we got the money in the B part it's fund. It's the way you allocate those things. There are certain limitations on what right. you can spend it on. Sure, sure. So as far as I know, in recent years, all those allocations, a transfer of funds were satisfying the bureaucracy the way we did it. Now, there are some communities that do just simply take money, and, and that's one of the issues that's in Raleigh right now. Some of these towns are just taking the money and, just like you were saying, just use it for town expenses. And uh, that's not going over well in Raleigh. And that, I can't remember if I talked to one of you about that. Um, I was in Raleigh three weeks ago or so, and, and uh, the... Um, subject of limitations on certain ways that the government that's collecting the funds that it needs to be more restrictive than it is now because there's some of those funds being collected are not being used on tourist related matters following what well I've just thought, but I've, I've read the code and it's pretty flexible you can you can assign a lot of things as being relative to tourism and that sort of thing. But your other choice is charge the people taxes for it and save that money for this $15 million or $18 million for, you know, that you're expecting for the future expenses. Could have been, but. And, and that's a board uh, and decision. was a board decision at the time. Definition. Yep. And, and to be honest, when this new building and the EOC were put into service, that was an additional debt service that the town took on, and we didn't raise taxes. And in all reality, what should have probably happened was the taxes be raised. Sure. Yep. But the economy, like I say, <coughs> went down so bad, the decision was made not to do that. David, how are we tracking uh, this year against the revenue estimates that you came up with for budget year 15? Um. Yeah. yeah, at the general fund level. Yeah, at the general fund level. You had 2,000,006 in last year's budget. Yeah, at the general fund level, the um, as of the 21st, and if you go all the way down to the bottom line, we were 2.6 and uh, 2.64, and and we're, we're almost up to 2.5 now. Now there are um, um, inter that's before interfund transfers are made. Um, that is also some of the state distributions are accrual based, and they're actually we won't get them until September, and to put forward and take back, but. <coughs> We're pretty good. We're actually ahead in the property tax uh, collection side. Well, I was just looking at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I got two. <laughs> Getting stressed about uh, the podium. Yeah, I mean, because uh, we're we're looking at a difference of nine hundred thousand from last year to this year. And, that and that's is why I'm asking, because... And, and, and specifically, that's specifically attributed to the um, 
it's an equivalent of 7.15 cents on the tax rate transferred from the general fund uh, to the Central Reach project. That money, uh, if you, uh, um, it's $837,000, uh, is a transfer directly across. <coughs> okay. David, is there concern that the building process, the building level or speed right now that we've got might dry up, might slow down significantly? I always worry just, about that. But, yeah. You know, I, I, um, the rest of the state's having that, a really slow down of the building. But a beach community it's different. is kind of at the tip of the pendulum. You know, as the economy changes, we, we go worse faster and get better faster. Um, and that's not only on the production side, <coughs> but on the, the sales and use tax side too, or the consumer spending. David. But the, the, that was only for the general fund. Um, on the, uh, the water fund. Well, wait a minute. Uh, I just wanted, you, you said that it was due to the transfer of the seven and a half cents. I, I don't see that in the. It would be on the expense budget. If you look in the governing body on page 18, transfer. Yeah, to transfer to B part. $835,000. Okay. So it's within. <clears throat> All right. It's in, it's in the general fund, and your taxes are collected in the general fund okay. from the ad valorem side. And you actually have to make a, an inner fund Got transfer of it to the beach. Um, the There's one thing that needs to be mentioned. It's not a major number, but uh, whenever we think in our minds that oh, there's a new house going up and that gives us more tax income. Uh, that is true, but in many cases we've got an old house that's been torn down or moved away, so it's not a 100% gain on your tax base. And you also have the cases that have been adjusted by the uh, Brunswick County uh, Tax Authority. In, in closing, this is my last slide, and I just wanted, this is a regurgitation of the revenue slide, two, two important points um, uh, to consider as we move forward on the Central Reach Project and its, its specifics. The interlocal agreement that has been signed by Brunswick County and is on the proposed agenda for the June 21st meeting, um, that was approved unanimously by the commissioners. Uh, we're looking at trying to get the application package together for the local government commission's meeting in July, which means that the challenge for the board is to set the tax rate, assuming that the local government commission's going to approve the application. I mean, that we, there's no other, no other alternative um, other than to wait another year, uh, which gets you into permitting issues and is not the path that the board has chosen to go down. We have coordinated with local government commission uh, staff people who have indicated concurrence, but that is not the local government commission. Those are staff guys, but we've just, you know, still got to go through the commission process, and I don't know what will come out of that. When did you say that meeting is? It will be um, at the end of July. Okay. not it'll be August. Um, the, this template that we're using, this funding strategy has been approved uh, for other local uh, North Carolina beach communities and remember that uh, even when we get local government commission's approval, we still have to go to market with the paper and how, that, how our fund balance, how our finances will be viewed in the bond market is uh, something that will be determined uh, by market forces. Has our consultants that were 
have they been uh, updated with that information and what's their feeling? Um, as a matter of fact, we've already been contacted, staff here has been contacted uh, with some exploratory inquiries from a couple of banks, uh, lending institutions, and we've, um, we've um, shared with them specifics on the project. They haven't been forthcoming on what type, what, what type of rate we'll get, uh, even though we went ahead and asked them. Uh, <coughs> I, I, um, I think that the proposed um, <coughs> financing the 10-year bond, y'all saw the actuary table, I think we're good at working with that. I think that we will be well within uh, what that proposes. That's probably the worst case scenario. But until we go to market, until we go to bid, you know, I've got to use that as the worst case scenario. And that's that's baked into everything. The worst case scenario. Okay. Um, those, that's the. And, that, and actually, the cost of uh, you know the Central Reach you think is is kind of the worst case scenario too, right? With the, the ten dollar. And um, what is it currently? Do you know? Right now. It, it's subject to to the uh, bid process. If okay. In the dredging, that <clears throat> that is probably. One of the most volatile markets that there there is. You know, it's heavily dependent on. Well, the price of oil is going up, so. It's just going up. Um, you know, that's if there's any storms. But we did have the pre-bid conference today. Um, the the bid documents are out. I'm, I'm so y'all hearing. Um, the bid documents have been out on the street. Uh, bid opening is July seventh. Uh, I, I thought it was July seventh. Fran thought it might be the end of this month, so he usually checked okay, the dates. Anyway, it's, 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 it's soon, um, and we did have a, a non-mandatory pre-bid <coughs> conference and had uh, uh, representatives from the big three um, to either call in or attend. That was Mason, Great Lakes, and Weeks. Weeks. So when, when those folks um, are participating, that's probably any along the, um, uh, the North Carolina coast that I'm aware of that projects that'll be in that time frame, but you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that wired in. You're saying competing with us? Right. The, the, okay. But those all have um, large scale hopper operations, which is what <coughs> we're permitted for. Which we want, right. Okay. But that's my last slide and I'll sit down unless you guys want me to Stand up here. So I'll be comfortable. <clears throat> All right, commissioners, what would you like to do next? Do you have any questions, John? We can go page by page <coughs> if you like, or discuss in no order if you like, or you can refund everybody's taxes that they paid last year. <clears throat> Whatever you want to do. <laughs> I would love to point something out too. I know it's kind of minor after we some of this price tag. You were talking here. But, uh, I did have about five hours of worth of equipment on the streets. It's not in that budget. And probably there's another piece of 500. It's probably like a depart item of equipment that's not incorporated in that. Um, ne are I'm these needs that you're talking about? Yes, yeah, sir. One of them is like a, a golf cart that lady does that road lap service. That Well, they've, they've been worse than that. They've been using the police, oh, yeah, been which, using about two months. which is totally a no-no. Yeah. Well, they need to have them now. Okay, I, good. I, 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 I played the candy club, the worst director, uh, trash man, tent man. I, I wish. I had bought it. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that that should absolutely positively not happen, them using that police vehicle. It's, right. it's a, they could be arrested. Doing doing that. Time, I guess you can There's you blame me for it at the time. I was mm -hmm. just kind of mercy. Watching it. Had no way of operating. <laughs> do that with the trash can. You're right. Well, the, yeah, the, the funny thing about it is, is that started out um, at, out of uh, 
a, a utility vehicle out of the B Park funded. The next time we looked around, the, the police had put lights on it, and you know, so it kind of it kind of walked, it it walked <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> We can say that's the chief way. We can say that's the chief And, and that's just for the board's um, clarification. That was not the manager cutting a budget uh, on purpose uh, for Chris. That was, uh, I just missed that one. In, uh, in moving some of these other seven figure, two, two common numbers around, that one, uh, that one just got by us. You know, you it, I mean, you got <coughs> this is I just had to be eyeballing it. Yeah, because right now, Chris, I mean, public works has zero, right? And you're asking for how many? So total, you said 5,000 for the vehicle, and, and what's your estimate, Chris? Well, the trailer and weed eaters and things like that, I think I'm going to be like a total of 4850, and the golf cart, the street legal golf carts around 84, 5500. So 10,000 total? 10,000. I'm going to get some of those with tags on the signal lights and, and the whole nine yards there. Like I said, what we've had worked out pretty good for years, but they were cheaper buggies, and they just wore out to a crab after 10 years. You need some yellow flashing lights on those things. Well, I've, I've, there, I've got a comment on the overall budget, and that is there are an awful lot of items, maybe a third of them, in which case the new budget is not the same as the before, or it's the same as before and the money never got spent, or it's significantly more than this year's spending amount and this, this year's budget. And it looks almost like it's kind of safety, just building in a safety zone for a lot of accounts. Would that be fair game or? Um, probably not. There may be a few that are like that. Um, for example, in uh, say communications where we had budgeted um, so, uh, maybe to procure uh, computers in administration um, and and didn't spend that money um, because when a computer goes down in administration, I'm, I'm dead in the water. I can't, you know, we can't run. We got to be able to, to turn that one back on quick. So some of those may be um, basically rollover expenses because we didn't spend the money in the prior year. Um, if, uh, if expenses are increased, for example, in the solid waste budget, that's just a direct reflection of, of the, the operation requirement went up. That, pro that probably didn't answer your question. Either. Well, that's, but that's fair. The, but the other question primarily is, you said there are no pay raises, and the big one that popped out for me was the two things on the police department expenses. One was that salaries went up from the budget for 16 was 352, and the next is 372. You you have to keep in mind that um, there was uh, the current year's budget for salaries was the that's the same entry as the proposed budget from last year, but the board appropriated seven tenths of a cents, eighty thousand right. dollars. Right. Um, and that line item is is over in the wellness line, and mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't well when you know I didn't go through last year when that eighty thousand dollars was approved oh, okay. and adjust each salary line. I just care I just embedded it as a eighty thousand dollar wellness line, and so um, the increase to the twenty two thousand dollars will reflect. The um, the salary equalization that we did this year, so it, that eighty thousand dollars of spread, it spreads across um, those line items. 
Okay. And the overtime that goes up 25%? Well, whenever you raise salaries up, you're going to have the, uh, approximately the same amount of overtime. Um, are you talking about police? Yeah, police overtime. Um, you know, we're see, we've seen an increase oh, because on the, the rates, actual. Because the rates are different. Rates are different. The rates are higher. Right. You're going to have the same amount of overtime. So right. you're, okay. you're, you're And yeah. plus, um, like in uh, the public works salary line items this year, you know, we've had some, I mean, we've had some emergencies that oh, we've okay. been having to deal with, and, and those overtime line items are, have been busted since March. But, but they aren't really consequential. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the only other, only other one on that is uh, the capital outlay, uh, a $60,000 expense for vehicles and equipment. Are you in um, the police, the police pay expenses? Uh, page, page E. e. Got yes. $60,000. in Yeah, that's the one and that one, one car? third. Well, that's the equivalent of one and one third vehicles because we we have an installment purchase agreement that have basically it's uh, a th three one-third car payments so that's the equivalent of one police vehicle and what we're proposing is that we installment purchase another vehicle uh, that would be a three-year payment plan so that sixty thousand dollars is the equivalent of one and a third police vehicles the cost on and you have to keep in mind well, because chief lane told me that cost twenty two thousand to buy a new pickup truck loaded with electronics no that's not correct it's more like forty five thousand dollars i don't know where that twenty two it's it's forty five thousand dollars uh to buy a fully loaded police i was vehicle. asking how to get it so cheap yeah that's um yeah he, he that, the same want, place he got he might have been them. talking about that golf cart that's the thing. That, a while ago, but that's those those police vehicles. When we price say, those, yeah. we price them with all the bells and whistles bit, yeah. because, um, yeah, we 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 get it all through state contract. Yeah, hey, but it's I understood that. But when I asked you here, it was twenty two thousand. Whoa, yeah. for a Dodge, it's got to be a real good government contract. What communications, what goes into that? Connection? That's that's everything from telephones to computers to, um, um, I don't know if I have the, uh, the water budget broken out in software support, but that's everything IT. Um, that's not printing, that's in supplies, correct? That's in supplies, okay. yeah. Now, if it's a, if it's a copier, you know, okay. that the, the copies go there. Yeah, print, printing is pretty much, it, it, I think those lines are restricted to paper copies. Okay. And are you allocating the costs between departments? Between or? departments, because there'll be a calm line in admin and a calm line in police, and I think the governing body's got a calm line <laughs> just to try to, you know, if we buy a computer in the police department, those costs need to, need to go um, you know, to be attributed to the police department. Oh, and by the way, the um, the police department vehicles, those costs also include, you know, any of the mobile data terminals that, get, that right. go in there. Right. So those, okay. those fully loaded. Yeah, yeah, those wouldn't really be reflected in the comm line per se. Yeah, communications is big business. Yeah. And and um, it it um, the the breadth of what communications entails, for example, is um, our in admin, uh, where we have our financial systems. That would be an example. Our internet provision, our hosting services. Um, our hosting services including included. Yeah, we run, and, and all of those, since that's a subscription service, um, each of those are attributed individually to the different departments. And now on the water side in communications, that would be where the, um, like the new meter read system, those costs are attributed to. Yeah, because yeah, that was kind of high, so I, I yeah, assume that's, that's exactly what it is. And, and the software support for that, um, that's a, a parochial, what's so, that word? So you have a contract on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, they, um, a third party unique 
software suite that uh, is provided there. Isn't that right, Chris? I mean, t- t- y'all chime in there. All right. I just have a random, I'm glad. <laughs> I was really surprised. I thought $100 estimated for um, traffic tickets as revenue next year? Yeah, it's probably, um, we have to have a place keeper for that. Um, whenever we ring revenue in and um, the Department of Justice uh, looks at that um, or can look at it, um, that may be as much a, a public relations thing as far as having a low projection on. What's our actuals? Do you, do you have any of last year? Uh, yeah. Now, you, you have to keep in mind, too, though, the difference. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to take a stab at this. If we write a state citation, those funds are not reflected in our on our revenue stream. And that would be those a, get paid through the state. And that, get, and that would be a speeding ticket. That would be a speeding ticket. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. citations are parking tickets. And some, something else along those lines. Okay, so that's a little misleading. Yeah. I mean, it would just be an ordinance violation. Yeah. The town we get the money for. Put your twenty-five dollars. And what, Chief, what would the, or I saw about $1,500 in ordinance violations. What would those be typically? Who would you, what, for what ordinance would you be citing? Are, are they, they may not be just um, police ordinance violations. They could, yeah, we could, they could be um, grass, too high. grass too high, yeah. You know, um, the, I mean, all the, all the ordinances of the town that can be violated and cited. Uh, okay. Noise. Any ordinance I guess I should have run that one up, shouldn't I? That one, yeah. Nah, I, I, should, I should shut that. <laughs> but have you not implemented the parking limitation on Ocean Boulevard West yet? I almost hit three cars yesterday. Well, there's three down about 220, <laughs> about 220 that are parked yeah. on the sidewalk every yeah. day. I know. David, uh, on page 24, down near the bottom, you talk about the interfund transfer. <clears throat> Oh, this is on the water and sewer fund yeah. expenditures. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, you say an interfund transfer is included as an expense from the water and sewer fund to the general fund. Yes. And in the um, amount of 120000 That's right. The emergency operations center uh, building debt is $93,000. And the insurance on that um, is is something more on top of that. That is an approximation charge um, to the water fund for the support rendered by the general fund. You know, we it you could look at it as you know that's the the debt service payment over there okay. um, plus some rent that the general fund charges here for running the water operations out of here. It, it should probably be more, but. Okay. Yeah. If, can I take another question? In light of what's just happened to us with Tim being sick, and the increase in building activity, uh, or should in this budget be the plan for having a second inspector available? What I did was I included contracted services. I Under up, contract. I up, I up that line in contracted services. But what we're doing, um, and uh, not as a full time staff. But what we're doing, um, we were, first of all, we were real lucky in um, uh, getting our hands on a, a very capable qualified interim substitute uh, for Tim. And so we've, we've got our finger in the dike right now and holding our own. But um, where we're going with the program is to get a um, an acolyte apprentice on a contractual basis is that 
Yep. Yeah, yep. so that when Tim needs to take some time off, he can Vacation. he can get somebody. So that we are working with the Department of Insurance to get someone um, under contract, soft contract, approved by the Department of Insurance that will provide us that capability. But that individual would be paid on a contract basis just like our existing substitute is. And so what we've done is we've increased um, the, the contract services line item in uh, building inspections. Now, if you look at the building inspections, contract and services line item from last year, I want to say that there was about forty, about forty or forty-five thousand dollars in that line item. That's misleading because that was for the demolition of Captain Jack's up there. The majority of, of, of those funds were so the, the I think it's twenty-five thousand dollars that we put in contract and services in inspections to uh, accommodate that. Now. Back to the question of, of um, is twenty five thousand dollars enough to handle all the inspections? I don't know. Yeah. What, how, uh, if it's not, about, I'm gonna have to come back to the board. I know? mean, I, I, I kind of thought maybe a backup. Uh, you know, Rhonda would back up Tim. Is that not feasible? She's 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 not a, um, a licensed not building inspector. Okay, I mean, that's a tough thing to accept to acquire. Okay. No, I know. I know she's not. But I, I thought. But actually, we had a number of owners that were financially hurt by not having an inspector available. Uh, even have a next door neighbor that had a crew in from Raleigh that spent three or four days waiting, and they were charging the guy all the, the whole time. And I'm sure other builders were waiting. So, I think we'd be well served to have a, a backup readily available in case Tim takes a vacation or happened to get sick. God bless him. If you know. Uh, just that we have that, especially if we have increased activity in the building business. Absolutely. David, some time ago, on this is, I'm thinking about the staff and uh, their wellness. Part of that is, you know, one of the benefits is vacation. How are we managing vacations? Because we heard a couple of meetings ago that I think specifically public works, there was a lot of accrued vacation not taken. So I'm, I'm not adhering to the personnel policy that basically says you lose it or use it. Um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to cut their leave off when we've got operational emergencies that keep them from going on well, vacation. That's, I mean, that's, that's what not I've my been question. Doing. Okay. I'm, I'm asking how are we managing vacation because that's the, you know, your staff numbers have to include, yeah. you know, estimates on sick. Yeah, sick time, vacation. But if they aren't taking vacation, then that that's a contributor to you know to to their impact on their health. Yeah. So how are we managing that generally? Chris has got his hand up. I for one have been, been volunteering vacation time for mine to get them whittled down, and I'm starting to get them whittled down pretty good. You're volunteering. You. <laughs> Oh, okay. He's, he's, he's sending them home, I well, think, is what he... I hope we hostage you. They need to get their vacation time in July. <laughs> and, 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 and public works and in inspections, uh, maybe not so much for inspections, uh, rainy days, that works well for rainy days. I mean, who wants to take a rainy day vacation? But, you know, sometimes... I've got some pretty devoted employees, but I have, it, it, you know, I try to be lenient and, you know, work with the schedule time starts getting up real like that, I just, you know, started doing the head stepping in and saying, well, you know, if we got a couple of days next week and we ain't got nothing going on, if you got something you do, we're good yeah. to do it, use some of your time, and it works out best for both of us, because nobody don't need to be on the job 24-7 and you right. get burned out on it and you get through. Exactly. You got an attitude, you're not good at dealing with the public, I don't know that. We're, we're making some, um, some, <laughs> um, placing some emphasis with the department heads to, um, to, to do those kinds of things and make sure people. Um, and, and that being said, I do those kinds of things from Labor Day to Memorial Day. From Memorial Day to Labor Day, all hands on deck. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way it is. Yeah, well, and it, you know, it's all. Take, most of us take the vacation in the summertime, that doesn't work for us. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and yesterday was probably a good example with the seagull incident that if somebody would have been, you know, cutting their grass at the house, that well, guess what? Turn the lawnmower off and come on. Well, the, and the budget link to that question that took me a while to get there was I was wondering if there's an expense and overtime because of the vacation accrual to where you've had to pay overtime for staff. There is for the police department. Yeah, as part as of myself, well. it's about the same because uh, most of my overtime comes up and that was something other than minor on a zoo uh, or something other than just a little one man job. Somebody be out there after hours anyway. Mm -hmm. And other than other than the police and public works, um, it, it's fairly de minimis because everybody else is administrative um, type type help or exempt. You know, with some of the the technical professional um, categories of the work they actually do, they don't qualify uh, for overtime. So actually, you did know, that answer? I mean, was that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was just. Yeah, I, I mentioned well, last time. Uh, I remember with, with the chief. I think we need to look into seriously, you know, how to alleviate some of that overtime, some of that stress, some of that mm -hmm. beach. We need to look at some of the options available to us, and I think uh, we should put that on the agenda for our next regular meeting. I can do that, and chief. I just I've been in that business a little bit in the past. If you worked them too hard for too long, and that's four months or whatever, you risk a bad decision getting made because the guy's exhausted. You know, he's just been running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, singly, emergency after emergency, and you get you can get tired after 36, 40 hours in the week and then working 12-hour shifts. So we'd be, we probably ought to be thinking about not having them have to work that much overtime in the summertime. Because I understand they can't take vacation in the summertime, but... Sometimes you might want to let one go. It, it works for me, but I've got 365 days a year, 24 hours a day to cover, and eight people to cover it, so it is what it is. And we do the best we can. To Unless you've got some summer help. <laughs> Just a general question I have is what is the staff's uh, view of this proposed budget. I mean, I appreciate you listing your concerns here because, and frankly, I'm accustomed to seeing concerns like this uh, for my former life. Uh, but, uh, and you know, we've essentially got, I guess, department heads here. <laughs> So I'm, I'm just asking in general, what's the staff's view of this budget? Chris has shared his, his input, but is there any other? Well, I mean, I, I think the majority of the staff realizes what the town is facing um, financially. And, you know, we adapt. Well, I'd agree with 
agree, and overall, you know, the rest of the operation. But you know, I don't have any questions uh, about it. And I know you know as well as I do, you know, like water and sewer, you can't get it with them down too tight because it's pretty, some pretty expensive parts and pieces that you have to replace and maintain on a regular basis, or you just open yourself up for, for trouble. You know, those pieces right there were overlooked. I just mentioned it because I didn't, you know, you didn't get in there and if we're going to provide those services. pile on again before that the the staff of you've got some long live staff and department heads and um, we are notorious for just meeting the requirement you know only budgeting for the requirement our challenge or where we have difficulties is capturing what that requirement is what's the expectation of service <laughs> delivery you know if we've if we've let that get to the point where you know it's a complaint base then you know we're not doing something right so you know our, our challenge is trying to anticipate what what that is and a lot of that's you know feedback from the public and the board um, but um, I I feel like that we've been uh, fairly succinct with the line items that we've, you know, put in the budget. Um, you know, some of them are, are fairly straightforward. Others, <clears throat> like how much water are you going to sell? You know, if I if I get that within fifteen percent. I'm, I'm going to hurt my wrist, pat myself on the back, but the luxury in that is that, you know, that's a direct revenue related thing. So with reference to those kinds of things that, you know, with, with a budget, <clears throat> you are projecting what you think is going, you're, you're going to do, what you're going to take in, what you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. So as the year goes by next year, just with your manager's, you know, message to us at each meeting, if we could get kind of a, an update on how that's going. You know, if, if we could get an update on this is how much money we are getting in from the water. You and, know, and, and, and you do that and, periodically. Um, we're actually already there. I just haven't brought it to you okay. um, two months ago. Um, we've actually started posting a form that's similar to the spreadsheets that y'all see in the budget. Um, by fund, by department, revenues and expenses, budget versus actual. Um, and therein lies the challenge because um, early on in the year, yeah. you spend a lot of money, but you don't get your taxes. But on the other side, you're getting like, anyway, um, it's there and available for discussion. And if the board would like, I can, you know, we can put that in the agenda, you know, if that's the type of thing, or do some type of summary. Um, and that would be that's that's fairly easily done. Um, so the web page now. Matt, I don't do a summary. Do I just summary. post the whole gross, the whole mess, and then if somebody you know has got something they want to want to look at it, um, um, I it would be matter of fact I do a uh, summary for myself um, just to see what cash flow is, um, you know, as the budget officer. And, and that would be, that's a one page that I can slip in the agenda package, no problem whatsoever. It's an easy do. I like that idea because, because we got a few things that we'd like to sneak in too, right? I mean, you said, so we'd want to see if those, those few items are, have a chance to happen or not. Right. And to kind of just keep track of what's going okay. on. Okay. And if you just did, like within 10% of them, over or under, I'm looking like I'm not tracking. 
and I'm more than 10% out, it'll be a warning, kind of, the, you know, it's kind of a summary that gives you the hot spots. Yeah. Plus, I, this we, is we useful. The, this, what's on the website yeah. now is yeah. useful. Yeah. It's right next to your left eye, right? Right next to my left eye, and there's nothing. Yeah, there, there is. That was done purposefully just to make sure I got my eye on it. <laughs> But you can click on that, and it'll it'll give you um, in, in it, it it it's as of the last day of whatever month it is, and then ne the next month we take it down and put put the new. But it but it is to date, year to date, and that will um I mean it's it's fairly excruciating detail on on what's in there. I have a couple of random. Um, are we still doing the admin for the police department? Yes, sir. And what's the, is that, what, $30,000? Um, about 10. I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you. That, did that start last it's year, Chief, or? With the budget year. Yeah. We put it in a couple of, uh, Too much uh, before, a few, right? a few, a little bit before the end of the budget year, right. and then budgeted a, um, a whole year. It's, um. It is two thousand one hundred. It's two thousand and eighty hours, or two thousand one hundred eighty-four hours. Year, huh? It's one man year so at twelve dollars an hour. Is what it is. About yeah. right? And so it's a temporary part time that's split between two people. It's not contracted services no? Mm -mm, no. for police. What's it? Yeah, the temporary. Oh, for that's police. Right. It's, it's, it, it, that that cost is actually <clears throat> embedded in their salary line. Ah, okay. Well, that would. Yeah. And did we did we find replacements for the uh, folks that are picking up the? Uh, Now, how, how long it is before <laughs> we're, we're looking for for more replacements is is. And they and they pull in any cans out there, whether it's um, uh, recyclable, blue or, yeah, blue or whatever blue. color, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, pull. No, they don't pull back in full cans. No. In other words, what I'm saying is, if someone puts out a can, oh, it's like a recycled too late. can, and it's not recycle week. Oh, they'll leave they it. Stay out they'll there. leave that can sit or, out there because it's not been collected. Or if you've already been by and they remember to get the yeah. garbage out of the rug, like my dad that morning, I see. And that's $32,000? dollars $25,000. You don't have to pay them benefits? Nope. That's just salary, just the contract. 12 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. 12 bucks an hour. Sure. So part, part, 25000 Part time, temporary, yeah. no benefits. So 25000 yeah. But Chief, you said something about you didn't ask for two people, and that's, I heard the same thing last year and maybe the year before that you hadn't asked for two people. You've probably got a retirement coming next year, right? Is it, he's got a prob isn't Mike probably going to retire next year, next year at 30 years? Maybe. maybe. Well, but if he does, he, he, he vacillates. I understand, but if he does, how long does it take you to get an officer up to speed? Uh, from. Talked to Mike two days ago. He was he was going to stay for several years, possibly. He's trying to get that last five-year average up. Don't know. He's been here, been here a long time. I think it all depends on if he's still enjoying it, to whether he's going to stay or not. Yep, that's fair. 
So, David, what is, what's your biggest risk in this proposed budget? Uh, hurricane hitting. Well, that's. And, and and taking the not only the tax base out, but also the occupancy tax. Okay, I was um, thinking oh. more in lines of of your concerns here. Um, for example, uh, I mean, the, the OGC not liking our fund balance and the cost of credit is that to me that's, that's yeah. Could that spike the rate, interest rate? Yeah. Because of all the other variables, that one's going to hit. We know we're going to, well, we plan to spend the money. So is that the biggest? Because essentially that's where we are with the tax, the reduction from 9.5 to 7.1, right? We took it out of the fund balance. I mean, of the chart you showed us puts us second to last at um, from 24 to reserves. 19. 19. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you, yes. The um, what I I'm, I'm thinking here what I have not prepared for you a, a penny's worth $116,000 and I I did not prepare a um, an incremental um, projection on a, a what if or what if you charged eight cent? What if you charge? What would that do to your available fund balance? That that may that may um, um, be helpful in in talking about what um, you know what that fund balance available mm -hmm. is. Of course. I don't have a crystal ball on how the local government commission or the market is going to perceive what our available fund balance is. Um, what I do know is that um, $669,000, I believe that's the number that's uh, in, in available fund balance. Um, you can burn through that pretty quick if there is a storm event. Um, or if some of the if there's a radical change in the sales tax legislation, which is on tap right now, there's there's a, a bill on tap to um, alter how the sales taxes are um, are uh, uh, are distributed mm -hmm. by towns. Uh, this year's it looked like to me that it was only. Uh, about three thousand dollars, from what I saw, if I'm remembering correctly, but that bill is still out there. So that that's another one of my, um, uh, you know, unknown variables is things that you 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 have. I I have no control over that. Um, but did that did I stumble through an answer? Okay, <laughs> enough for you there. <laughs> yeah, fun balance bothers me. Fun wanted... balance bothers me. Yeah. You know, and and what I'll do is I'll do I'll do a what if and and just you know add a add a penny and I'll subtract a penny you know just so for but you could also do the same system. thing what well, if the interest rate is one percent higher than we thought on the loan or two yeah, percent higher um, I think we're okay there you don't I, think I, this will hurt I, I I think we're okay um, from what I'm getting back you know I, I think we're okay people are coming to you so it should be okay yeah. Well, I was just thinking earlier we've but heard don't that write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, well, with, with respect to fund balance, I heard, you know, towns do it differently depending on how they're accounting for it. Uh, if we've got a good story to tell on how conservative we are, if we are, I would think that would be important to, to tell the LGC. And, 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 in and the, you said we've already had lenders contact us. Maybe they already know this. We reduced over two million dollars in the Part B fund, so it's not like it's going away totally. We've there have been times in the past we've had a million in the Part B fund, and we were at nine, some somewhere around nine or ten percent, or you know, is, is our our number. 
Yeah, so, but we weren't asking for $15 million. No, we weren't asking right. for that's, that's money then either. Right. That's right. I'm just saying yep. yeah. we do still have some resources available to us. Yeah. You know, fund balance available is y'all mm -hmm. are the determining, you know, what you feel good with. You make the determination on that. Over, which is over and above the state mandate of 8%. Well, we are and we aren't, right? The market does and so does the... I, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I'm kind of just thinking ahead, too, because, you know, we, we don't have the benefit of, of the public commenting on how they see it. So I'm just thinking ahead on... Well, we've got... We could open it up if you and, want to ask. And now this this budget message was posted on the website. I don't know what uh, you know the day that yeah, it was filed. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know what kind of kickback that y'all have received. I have had no feedback um, whatsoever. Yeah. I mean that that has come to me. Not that I've gone looking for it. Now um, during the. Um, consideration phase when the county commissioners were talking the uh, considering the interlocal agreement the other night um, one of the commissioners did ask um, what this nine and a half cents you know what the feedback on that was and the only um, thing that I had to offer her was a couple of, of, uh, of comments that commissioners <coughs> have shared with me our commissioners have said shared with me and said um, they have heard nothing uh, anti about it. You know, th there's been no one complaining about that. Well, I've had lots of input, but about Central Reach, it's all been positive. Yeah. Everybody said we want it, we need it, and we got to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. That particular one, they're very supportive of. Right. So that's been, you know, kind of my dialogue. I, it, in the in the public forum, I haven't had anything uh, from any citizens per se coming back to me on uh, on the proposed budget. Now that may be different on the 21st of June, and it may be different whenever the tax bill, um, you know, comes due in 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 December of this year. But but basically. The expenses are flat, you're saying, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Year to year. No, no increases, no cuts. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, other than um, <clears throat> the emergency operations center payment went up about $20,000. We took a better rate and a shorter term mm -hmm. uh, refinancing from the prior year. Yeah, I mean, that, was, you know, that, that expense went up. No. But long term, it's safe. But, but long term, right. it was, I forget, it was $100,000 savings yeah. or something like that, or $90,000. Um, expenses on this building are up. You know, we're, we're going to be in the 10th year here. I, I've got 13, uh, 15 air conditioners on the south side of the building that, um, you know, they're in looking over the expenses that we've incurred since the summertime of last year, it, it seems like there's always an air, con air conditioner man in here working on the air conditioner, and that's only going to get worse as time goes So are all of them 15 years old? They're 10 years old. <laughs> oh, they're 10 years old. That's the yeah, life the of buildings, the... The building's 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, so that's... Or that's nine, the, nine years That's old, the expected either. life of the air conditioner right on the beach? Yeah, and they're... And beyond. Yeah. Beyond it? Well, those are on the south side of the building, with the sun and the rain and the wind and the it's all fault too. Yeah. So. And they were on a program that being washed out for yep. a while. I don't know if right. that program's still that's right. we got yep, it's it's in there. Uh, yeah, so, the only you know that's that's a, just example. Yeah. I mean, there are some increases plus the solid waste that I mentioned. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if you talk about the tax increase and I I've had some people people nine and a half cents scared a lot of people. Seven cents Probably be nicer, but you know the first thing that in my business, <laughs> they you know travel and expense, phew, done. You know, you, so I don't see any adjustments to you know travel and training supplies, you know things like that. Well, I mean, when we're when we're um, you know part of 
when you have a small staff, you know, we we have to travel and train them. You know, if I if I in a perfect world, if I had uh, my way, I would say if the if the uh, if the payroll is a million bucks, we should be invested 10% uh, of that in training on, on people. And, um, you know, those, those travel and training expenses, especially over in the beach side, um, those are critical to what we net, how we network with the different federal and state agencies. And I, I would see those as being very critical and an important part of what we do. You know, in admin, I think it's um, six or seven thousand dollars, and I've got five people, you know, working off of that. And you can't go to a class, you know, uh, uh, continuing education. Um, you know, to go to Chapel Hill for a couple of days of mandated training is 500 bucks. Yeah. Well, I think the police department's travel and training budget actually did go down. Okay. A couple of grants. David, a uh, question. You, under the slide where the budget, what it does, you got uh -huh. canal dredging. Yeah. Isn't that a self funded? It, it is. Oh, wow. It yeah, is. I would. Have to be in yeah. Just to me, my impression was that we're. I know we have to budget for it because we assess. But uh, it's that one is. I mean, the, the canal owners fund that. It is directly, and, and, and that's about. One seven, one point seven million dollars, and it's it's big. Okay, and so I you've just got to make sure that place. it was All right. it, it was um, that it was in there because if, if if I didn't put it in there, I'm sure somebody would. I'm not dredging anymore. Okay. But. Yes, that is a hundred percent funded um, by the property owners, and um, is one of the inner fund transfers that that fund pays back to the general fund for the overall management and keeping up with the money managing the permits. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have any other questions or comments. Uh, Mr. Stewart, I'm gonna ask you um, to give an executive summary in regards to the special project fund projects funding such as a growing and um, consideration of any land purchases and so forth in regards to how it's addressed or not addressed in the budget. And, and the uh, any land purchases aren't aren't addressed at all in the budget. The two million dollar residual. This current budget um, also includes the. Um, end of permitting phase for the terminal growing. So that's in the operational budget out of the BPART fund. Um, there's $2 million uh, in the uh, BPART fund, the $2.5 million uh, terminal growing cost is actually included in year two of the capital plan um, at $2.5 million. And um, I think it's in the FY eighteen nineteen uh, column there. But the renourishment that will be required would be under an expense, not under that capital budget, or the uh, ongoing. The ongoing. No, the immediate one. You've got to do some some spending right away with it, right? You fill up the fill it and. Oh, uh, the two and a half million. That's dollar. just for laying the stones in the water. That is the. Initial construction, which would include the fillet. Does it? Yeah, the fillet's not that big. Okay. Yeah. Is the ongoing, David, out the years or not? Well, the ongoing is unknown. And remember, the permit that we get is only going to be for initial construction, or that that's my understanding. Um, there will have to be a, um, you know, say so we haven't seen these permits before. Mm. Um, I, the, how, I'm not sure how the permit will be written, if it um, will be written so that we can go back in and fill it 
in if need be. My problem is is that um, I don't know what the what the erosion rate on the fillet might be, so it's kind of hard to project what those costs might be. So, you know, I put two and a half million dollars down for initial construction in year two, and but our consultants you know, have projected all that out, haven't they? Well, you got to keep in, in the, mind in the process. You got to keep in mind that the environmental impact statement uses a number of thirty million dollars, and that's a that is a um, core document that projects the worst case scenario. My budget is saying that it's going to work, and I'm putting two and a half million dollars in on construction in year two. Okay. If if somebody can tell me to put um, a larger number in the out years, uh, it's a 30 year project, and we've got a, a 10 year um, uh, capital improvement plan. I mean, we're going to do a capital improvement plan for 30 years. That's probably not realistic either, but it is a core document. And, and the sewer, sewer is in the 10-year? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I actually put that um, in, uh, if you look at the um, second page of the, of the CIP, um, it's, it's uh, before page A and after. It's the folded out one. Yep. Okay. Um, awesome. The the water and sewer, the uh, the first column. Yeah, of course, those are the costs that are in the embedded in the current year's mm -hmm. budget. Um, on the the sewer, um, that two hundred and ten thousand um, dollar is the gen set. And then um, if you look in the the uh, four next four columns, yeah. those are the lift stations and the order of of uh, merit on their um, whatever might be done to them is lift station two, three, four, and then one. But that money's already in the fund, right, or not? Can in, the water and sewer fund support that, or do we? You've got, um, you've got about three, it's over $3 million, three million. Dollars in the water and sewer fund. But um, how much is it? Can that be used for this? Yeah, yeah, that you can use it for. You you can use that to do the construction on these lift stations. But that money is also be used is used to pay down the different debt that's associated. Your with the sewer. your debt is in the current year and generated from the revenues that are oh, okay. in the current year. The people the people pay for that too, right? right? Mm -hmm. And the people pay yeah. for the capital. We don't make a we don't okay. make an appropriation from fund balance in order to pay debt service. You could okay. if you want to pay the note down faster, but that's not the the, the strategy there um, that we've done. And that's um, th that was to my point where uh, you know, I had uh, just pulled that two hundred and ten thousand dollars out of all of those other line items, and had not pulled out the engineering funds for the current year to make those um, to make those so, remedies. Okay, so that so we could pull out money from that sewer fund, right, to pay for what you're calling engineering. But I would yes, sir, absolutely. I I we, we can discuss it at the next meeting, but I I think. That's premature to start engineering something that we've kind of discussed, kind of at a level at a at a. Um, Y'all need to let the sewer committee PNZ, come to you and right. bring it to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And that that is on the draft agenda for yeah. next month. Yeah. Yeah. But you you do I think that your point, what you're asking me, is that David, do we have to make the engineering appropriation concurrent with the adoption of the budget? And that answer is no. Because if you decide in August, you know, well, let's get smart. You know, let's let's get smarter on this. Or um, uh, even though the the sewer advisory committee, you know, there there is urgency to implement those things. If you're not comfortable with it, then you could go in and make a fund balance appropriation for those engineering services from from that after from, from, that. from the key. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, the, at your discretion. Right. Back to the mayor's uh, comment. Since we don't have any, well, what are our financing options if we were to decide to purchase some properties that have I, come I, on the market? I, I think that your financing options 
would be to, um, um, you could start with the whole six and a half million dollars in the fund balance of B part um, and decide, well, do we want to buy property? Um, you know, will that reduce our down payment on the Central Reach project? You could go through that, your, um, go through that exercise, but you would also have the option of installment finance purchase, getting a loan on it, um, uh, you know, traditional getting a bank loan, but you, uh, and that you would have debt service that goes along with it, which is going to be, you know, are you going to tax? Then you have the same question on, you know, how are you going to fund your easy payment plan? Um, and then of course, there's always the, um, the grant, uh, possibilities and I don't know what those might be at this point in time. So there's there's a there's a host and a range uh, at different levels that, that you could go through. Well, are you working through some scenarios? I yeah. hadn't found it yet. I hadn't found a pile of money yet. It's interesting. Our you know this building. Ten years. A lot of our big debt are, are being paid off, you know, within ten years, and you know, we have a lot of debt now. And then it, seven years, or, or the sewer in what three years, and the, okay. this building ten years. So, so there's a lot of if you if you project out five to ten years, a lot of debt is being paid off. Yes. And to your point. We have a unique opportunity now, not five years from now. Right. That it would be an interesting, you know, exercise to figure out if we could do that. Because if you project five years from now, it's a different, different uh, situation as far as our debt. And I'm sure if we get to that position, any lending institution is going to be reviewing our AFR and, and looking at that yep. and, and yep. what they would offer up. Um, but that's, that, that is a scenario yep. or a possibility. <clears throat> okay. But I'm not, I'm not there with it. You know, I'm not, yep. I'm not okay. there with that. Uh, can I ask a question of the board? Um, the the 10 year capital improvement plan, was that worth the exercise in going through uh, to y'all? I mean, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. I'm Just used to seeing the. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, you know, it gets the further out you get, the wilder the estimates are sometimes. But yeah. um, I, I, for one, found it a, a useful exercise to go to. Uh, or go through, and and I think that the department heads did too. So. Yeah. And you plan yeah. to update it annually? Um, th this is the best time of year to do it, is yep. concurrent with the budget, because, you know, year one just slides right into yep. the budget, and that, that's, um, it, it's done a, a number of different ways. And, you know, as, let's just say, hypothetically, in August, you want to do something to those lift stations, and we would, you know, those types of actions would, um, you know, when we do a budget amendment, we would up we would amend the capital plan accordingly or concurrently with that. But yes, sir. A similar layout of ten years with our debt service turns out to be a nice document as well. Yeah, and um, um, I vacillated on doing that, and where I ended up with, I just thought I would um, put it all in uh, the amortization schedules in the budget message, but that's a, that's an easy do too, and that, that, that can do that as a follow-on action. My experience with capital plans is that, you know, people put their items in and uh, there has to be discipline to spend it when you plan to spend it instead of waiting until, you know, the, the latter part of the fiscal year because then everything hits. Right. You know. Right. So uh, you've got time periods in here. Well, you don't, but internally you're going to have to have. Yeah. You know those milestones. And, and, and it's going it's going to have to mate. It's going to have to mate with the uh, funding stream, the revenue right. stream, and yep. you know depending on what department or fund it's in, it's going to be directly tied to the. 
you know, the seasonal fluctuation in, in yeah. what, what we see with our revenues here. You know, all the water gets used in the, in the, the summertime. All the, uh, all the occupancy tax comes in in the summertime, and then there's a famine until the next May, but the uh, tax revenues come in in the Jan December, January time frame. So, yeah. I hadn't thought about it until I was looking at this, and I got an email today from a VRBO advertisement. Do we get, we don't tax the VRBOs, do we? The VRBOs are uh, obligated just like you are as you, um, if you rent your house. But now, do they do it? Well, we've, we've been through several exercises. Margaret's the tax collector, but um, we've been through several exercises where we have uh, basically cyber stalked them and, um, and, and attempted to locate them. We have gone through those exercises and, um, and tracked them down. Uh, some of the VRBOs will actually use uh, tactics where they don't identify the, the address of the house or anything and just give contact information. Um, and we've actually gone to the extent that our police officers have aided in the identification of the picture of the house, what it looks like from the road. So we, 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 we Margaret, di Margaret digs pretty deep on that. I mean, you want to add something to it, Margaret, please? Yeah, and we have an Airbnb that's new, and, um, and they're sending in for several houses. Um, and we do it periodically, go on the websites and look for people and send them a letter. Sometimes they will respond back. Yeah, that's that's what really makes it easier is that um, you know somebody that's abiding by the rules um, really begrudges those that don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to adjourn? Um, if I could, if I could stop you, or if you want to stay here another hour or two. We need to Um, the clerk's correct me. I stand correct. So if, it, if you want to make it official, I kind of already advertised it, but the public hearing at 7 o'clock on the next, the date of the next board meeting at the board, we'll just make a motion. Uh, is there a motion to make the public hearing of our budget at 7 o'clock at the regular scheduled meeting in June of 19, no, 2016? Yeah. I make the motion of what the mayor said. Okay. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? Just a question. Uh, does that afford us enough time for the public to to hear the budget? With our well, other it's, it's a it's a it's a formal presentation, and um, it also gives you nine days. You can make the determination on whether you want to adopt it then, or it just has to be adopted before the end of the fiscal year. It satisfies the requirement. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And you don't have to pass it at that meeting. Right. You you you, you can see okay. what type of kickback you get. All right. Back to Again. we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those say no. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.